Hello YouTube, this is Moniker127, and in this video we are going to be discussing electrical current. Electrical current is just a term that refers to whenever electricity is flowing. Whenever you have electrons flowing from one place to another, or moving in general, that's referred to as current. If you shock yourself on a metal object, uh, that's considered a flow of current. Uh, if you run a fan out of the wall outlet, it draws current. So current is measured in amps. Uh, Ampere is named after Andre Marie Ampere. And an amp is defined as the amount of current that flows when one volt is placed on the resistance of one ohm. For one second, the amount of current that flows is defined as one amp. And that amount of current is also referred to as one coulomb. So a coulomb, I think I'm pronouncing that right, people usually just call them coulombs. One coulomb of electrons is 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So that's a lot of electrons. Just spelling that out normally. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think I did that right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so that number that you see there, that is the number of electrons that are involved in one amp per second. So if you were to measure water flow, you would equate it to something like gallons per second. Uh, um, I don't really know exactly what they use in the plumbing industry, but um, it would be something like gallons per second. Well, this is the electrical equivalent. A coulomb, C-O-U-L-O-M-B, is the equivalent of a bucket full of electrons. We use that amount because this is tandy. So 6.25 times 10 to the 18 or you know however many zeros there. I prefer scientific notation. It's much easier to remember. Uh, one bucket or one coulomb of electrons per second equals one amp. Um, so typical usages would be like say a a uh, 60 watt light bulb that you might see in a lamp uh, pulls one half an amp so every second one half of a coulomb of electrons pass through that uh, light bulb and so that's current um, going on to slightly more advanced topics not terribly advanced in general but um, different kinds of current you have alternating current and you have direct current. Alternating current switches between positive and negative, usually on a fixed delay. And direct current remains the same voltage level regardless of time, more or less. Alternating current is pictured on the top direct current is pictured on the bottom. Um, if you were to visualize the voltage levels versus time. So on your vertical axis you have voltage and on your horizontal axis you have time. Let me write out the labels here. Okay, and let me decrease my text size. I should probably use preformatted images, but I find it helps if I draw them up as I'm doing the video. No one really wants to see a slideshow, so this is more of an interactive way of doing a video, I think. 
Okay, so hopefully this shows up in the video, but at the bottom here I'm writing time that, because that's our horizontal axis. And on the um, vertical, I'm writing voltage. And that's our basic graph. So you, these are two separate graphs, by the way. But I'm just putting the single lines there to clarify them together. So you might have on this top graph here, let's say there's plus 10 at the top minus 10 at the bottom. That would mean that this alternating current sine wave uh, switches between negative 10 volts and positive 10 volts. And I haven't noted the time here, so um, it would be pointless to talk about frequency yet. But the important thing to remember is that alternating current switches between positive and negative, and when it's on the upper part of this graph here, it's positive. When it's on the lower part, it's negative. And direct current remains at a steady rate. So let's say this is always plus 12. And alternating current and direct current have different sources and different uses. Alternating current is what you'll find in the wall outlet, like at your house to plug in your lamp or your computer or whatever. Um, what comes out of the outlet is alternating current, and it is alternating between positive and negative uh, voltages of 120 volts, um, though we'll talk about root mean square values later. It's alternating between 120, positive and negative, 60 times a second. And um, that's the kind of electricity which you'll get mostly off of the grid. We use alternating current because it is much easier to transport. Whereas direct current is what we actually use in most applications, whereas direct current is uh, more generally useful. Like you could power pretty much anything in your house directly from direct current. But um, it's much less efficient to transport it long distances. So generally, you receive alternating current to your devices, like your computer. Uh, and then inside your computer, there's something known as a rectifier, which changes alternating current into direct current. And this is very easy to do. So we choose to do most of the work of transmitting the electricity from the power plant to your house in form of alternating then uh, where necessary we swap it to direct current via a wall wart or an internal rectifier. And that's probably way too much information about current for one video, but I hope it was helpful, useful, and uh, thanks for watching.